in exchange for sex. UN employees have been accused of 22 other incidents of alleged sexual abuse or sexual exploitation in the past 14 months. The most recent accusations come in the wake of efforts to implement a zero-tolerance policy for such offenses. Other sex crimes have occurred in Mali, South Sudan, Liberia, and Democratic Republic of Congo in recent years. The Saudis must have checked Padridi's book out repeatedly. In Saudi Arabia, in what would be regarded as non-existent crimes in a free republic, minimal crimes including making homemade wine, talking about sex, driving a car while being a female, or even just having unrelated people in your house could get you jail time, flogged to death, or beheaded. Ladies and gentlemen, the Saudi government runs al ISIS, runs al-Qaeda. Does that mean that sometimes these groups don't attack Saudi Arabia to demand more goodies? And more power and more weapons? Absolutely. But that's the real problem. There it is in the New York Times. Convicted terrorists claim Saudis funded al-Qaeda and knew a plot to down Air Force One. It's in the 28 pages that Saudi Arabia was running the hijackers and they were in Saudi intelligence. Of course, the United Nations answer to Saudi Arabia's abject cruelty is to give them a key position on the UN Human Rights Council. Why stop there? North Korea appears to be overqualified. Last year, WikiLeaks intercepted classified files between British diplomats and the Saudis, revealing that the UK worked with the Saudi government to get them elected to the UN Human Rights Council. Meanwhile, in the UK, government pedophilia takes center stage. While in Germany, the German government children's department distributed millions of leaflets promoting pedophilia while ignoring the rape of its citizens by an unrelenting wave of foreign rapists they brought in. Simply put, a global crime syndicate disease that makes the rules while breaking those very rules and claiming immunity is quickly infecting your government, your finances, your child's future, and ultimately your life. John Bound for Infowars.com. Coming up, Alex Jones is going to talk about the Infowars inspired X Files series as well as the revolution going on in Hollywood. This is a protest, and this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Infowars.com. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well. And he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all in InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet. I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things, and if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Alex Jones here with InfoWars Nightly News. We're going to be throwing it back to Leanne McAdoo here in the studio just in a few minutes, but we have some very, very exciting news. One of the biggest TV series in world history, sometimes getting as many as 55 million viewers per episode. That's close to the Super Bowl. The X-Files, after a decade of being gone, is coming back. And the creator, the producer, the director of many of the episodes, Chris Carter, has said what I was already told by Dean Hagelin and other insiders from the original show, that a lot of it was based on the quote conspiracy theories that I myself and others developed but also from Chris Carter's own research now I'm not a big mainstream television watcher but obviously I did watch some of the X-Files back when it was on television and it didn't leave because it didn't have ratings it left because I guess Carter wanted to do other things well now he's coming back he's given a big interview to entertainment weekly and said hey listen world government's a real threat uh, I'm not you know, making a show about right-wingers, I'm basing it on libertarian Alex Jones, who's one of the main characters uh, that the, uh, you know, two FBI agents come to to learn what's happening. Geoengineering, chemtrailing, false flag terrorism, genetic engineering. Now remember, MIT Magazine yesterday admitted they're growing humans inside cows and inside sheep and pigs, uh, you know, just a few days ago. We've known about that chest station for decades, but now it's all being admitted. So there's really this point where the elite are announcing world government, they're announcing global taxation, they're announcing the war on the family. They've denied all this was happening forever. They denied the Federal Reserve was private, now they admit it. And now as we race towards a global financial implosion that the Royal Bank of Scotland said today is imminent. I'm not saying it's imminent, they are. I'm at risk of becoming passe. Really, because so much of what people didn't believe I was saying has come true. It was already true. It was in white papers, government documents, you name it. But it's amazing. Let's start scrolling through this if we can. Let's uh, show folks the headline again uh, in there in the control room. Fox X-Files reveal has controversial new theories. And then it goes through UN takeover, 9-11 and more. And you scroll down into the article. It says, you know, they're like, hey, you're basing on Alex Jones, the right winger. And he says, no, he, you know, he's a libertarian guy. And the UN world government, you know, takeover is a real deal. And this is based on InfoWars. 
It says that lower down uh, in the report. There it is. Uh, it says uh, the conspiracy theory plays a bit like Oliver Stone during his JFK pitch, only if his source material was info wars instead of UFO lore. So before they were 80% UFOs, 20% government conspiracies. Now they're going to be 80% government conspiracies, 20% UFOs. And that's exactly what Coast to Coast AM did about 14 years ago under the leadership of George Norrie, which made the show even more successful, is they quit doing 90% space aliens and chupacabras and stuff. Uh, the show's on 600 stations, second biggest radio show in the world, 16 million listeners conservatively every night, just on terrestrial radio, not mentioning satellite or internet. It's more like 18 million. But new X-Files based on Alex Jones' InfoWars. We have the story uh, reposted at InfoWars.com for posterity. But again, ladies and gentlemen, I used to go out to Hollywood every few months. I, I used to be on Discovery Channel shows, history shows. I've been in a couple big link letter movies. I got offers to be in other big movies. In fact, I was offered major, uh, not top roles, but uh, supporting actor roles just in the last decade. I mean, for big movies. And I said no for a reason. Hollywood has been totally controlled by propagandists. And I knew in the underground, I had a better chance of putting out my ideas because the internet was a new open platform for that. And then I wouldn't be able to get my ideas through Hollywood. I, I, I needed to change the world and, and have others change the world first before I would be able to then do things through Hollywood. But the fact that Hollywood itself, and I talked to so many big directors, so many big actors on air, off air, everybody from Vigo Mortensen, uh, you know, to you name it, that they are being suppressed and they're sick of not being able to come out and talk about what's really on their mind. A great example is the last Captain America from Marvel. Most Marvel stuff is just pure mindless tripe. The last Captain America, Winter Soldier, was incredible. I mean, it's exactly what we're facing. AI systems exterminating millions of Americans that are seen as individualists that won't go along with the corporate Borg takeover. So the fact that the X-Files creator is admitting and hat-tipping that much of what he's going to do is based off the theories that I bring out, the fact that he said nice things about me shows how far we've come. And they're going to show my view and then the Carter's view and then, you know, because he talks about it. And then obviously someone else saying well, I'm full of bull, Scully. But it doesn't matter. The fact is that we've come to this point shows that we're super effective. I mean, look at these Facebook mentions we do. Because we're simulcasting that right now as we tape for the nightly news tonight. The average one is getting half a million views right now. Um, in the last week, we've probably done eight or nine of these, over 10 million views. So the average is going up. We have videos that get 3 million views in one day. And that's just on a Facebook platform. Billions of views on YouTube. Tens of millions of listeners every week on terrestrial radio. The truth is, folks, we're already as big as the X-Files was in mainstream. So it's already happened. The huge success has already happened. It's just the establishment is trying to pretend like that's not going on and marginalize people that say, hey, Obamacare is written by foreign banks to double and triple prices. The Republicans wrote it. It's a screw job. They use Obama as their front to get it through. Or, hey, the government admits they want to take our guns. How dare them say that we're conspiracy theorists. It just doesn't work anymore. The people don't have confidence in the system anymore. It doesn't mean I have all the answers. It doesn't mean you have all the answers. But we know believing the same old story, going along with the establishment, is getting us nowhere. Donald Trump, whether he's good or bad, his huge success, his meteoric rise, being number one for six months, looking like he's going to get the nomination, is due to the fact that people are in open revolt and rebellion, an uprising against the system. It could be a ham sandwich. They're going to support it when the establishment attacks it. Their endorsement of Trump is what kills him with the establishment. Now, to be clear, what I'm talking about here is when they attack Trump, because that's doublespeak, but, but that's how they think, that is an endorsement to the people. If they wanted to hurt Donald Trump, they would actually come out and endorse him and say that he was a great guy. That's how much credibility they've lost. So to be clear, when the system attacks Donald Trump, that is an endorsement. Because the people hate the establishment and Congress with its 9% approval rating so much. So coming up tonight, 
on the InfoWars Nightly News. Leanne will air uh, this that we're taping right now. It's going out live uh, on Facebook mentions. And then she'll get into other really, really serious topics. I don't normally...